talking, talking about people. I hear them whisper. You won't believe it. So many rumors kept under cover. Maybe they're seeing something we don't die. Then let's give them something to talk about. Something to talk about. A little mystery to figure out. Something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. Something to talk about. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Hello, Dave. Where is everybody? Well, Miss Emerson and Miss Malone haven't returned from lunch yet. Uh -huh. And Representative Sugarbaker's in her office talking to the president. The president? Oh, why is she still talking to him? We don't have to talk to him anymore. We Republicans are in charge now. That means we can stop kissing it and start kicking it. It's kind of like getting ridiculous. I mean, they talk all the time. They're like Regis and Kathy Lee. I think she genuinely likes the president. Well, that is beside the point, isn't it, Dave? We have a revolution going on here, and she could be a part of it. It's just plain dumb that she continues to call herself an independent. Her husband was a Republican, and she's a Republican, too. She just doesn't know it yet. By the way, this invitation was delivered a few minutes ago. For me? Oh, my gosh. This is an invitation for an informal coffee with Tony Blankley. Oh, my God, when it rains, it pours. Do you know who Tony Blankley is, Dave? Isn't he the press secretary for Newt Gingrich? That's correct. And he has a lot of big journalists in his pocket. Maureen Dowd, Michael Kelly, and now he wants me to have coffee with him. Do you realize what this means, Dave? That even though you're a Republican, your butt-kissing days aren't completely behind you? I, I don't know if you've heard, Dave, but we have a real passion around here for staff reductions. Happy days here again, the sky's above. Oh, hey, wait a second. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't leave my sunglasses in the cafeteria. By the way, I wanted to thank you for taking me to lunch today. I feel much better now. Well, you know, a lot of ex-husbands come back and try to put their hand in the old cookie jar again. <laughs> you just got to hang tough. Trust me, I speak from experience. I didn't know you'd ever been married. I didn't say they were my ex-husbands. <laughs> oh, here they are. Hey, listen, do me a favor when we get back in there. I'm going to play a little joke on Natty and tell her that we sat next to her hero, Jesse Helms, in the Senate cafeteria. Well, we did sit next to him, which will make it much easier for me to play along. Yes, I know we sat next to him, but I'm going to say I did something really bad, you know, just to get her goat. She's been driving me crazy lately. Uh, <laughs> happy days are here again. The sky above. You know, that's a Democratic song. It was written for FDR. <laughs> yes, I know. We won that in the election, too. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd be tired of it by now. We can just put on a Lee Greenwood tape. Oh, that's very funny, Emerson. By the way, I won't be here tomorrow. Between 8 and 9 a.m., I will be having coffee with Tony Blankley in his office, should anyone need to get a hold of me. That is assuming we can be interrupted. Oh, I'm very impressed. And congratulations again. We're all aware you won. Red meat was a special in the cafeteria today. <laughs> and I was the only woman in there not wearing pearls. <laughs> you want to take some sour union-picked grapes? Hmm? Not sour grapes, Natty. It's just that you've been running around with that big smirk on your face, passing out fig newtons and singing that damn song for weeks now, and enough is enough. <laughs> I mean, if we have to hear show tunes the next two years, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> uh, promises, promises. <laughs> you know, I was feeling a little ashamed. But now, I'm really glad I did what I did at lunch today. You people are just insufferable. What are you talking about? We sat next to Jesse Helms in the Senate cafeteria. Oh, you're kidding! No, that part really happened. <laughs> what did he say? What was he doing? I he was eating. And unfortunately, when he went to get a napkin, he took a really long time coming back, which gave me a lot of time to think about all the things I don't like about him. And there was his soup, just sitting there, unattended. And, I don't know, on impulse, well, I... I'm afraid I spit in it. <laughs> you know, that is truly one of the most disgusting things I have ever heard. Get real, Natty. Waiters do it all the time. <laughs> Maybe to you. Trust me, I know I've only known you for a few months, but I feel very safe in guessing that many of your waiters went home with cotton mouth. <laughs> You know, Everson, I don't think this is funny or amusing. Jesse Helms is an American institution, and whether you like him or not, he deserves to be treated with some respect. 
I mean, why don't you just go winkle on the Washington Monument while you're at it? Because the judge said the next time he won't suspend my sentence. Anyway, I can't take it back now, can I? I'm sorry. Ever since I stopped drinking and the elections were held, I've been in a really foul mood. This always happens when I'm drying out. I guess you better warn your friends to stay away from me or I might spit in their soup too. Or even worse. You certainly made me feel better and to repay you, I'm gonna help you get settled in your new apartment. In fact, I'm gonna knit you a nap can. Great, Malone. I need all the help I can get. You know, that Martha Stewart book I sent for is just too complicated. Hell, I feel lucky if I can just keep a matching set of coasters. When am I gonna find time to make my own candles and raise livestock? And why does everything have to be homemade? Doesn't that woman ever go to the store? Oh, there you all are. Listen, Natty, I thought you were gonna brief me before that subcommittee meeting this afternoon on TV violence. Well, I am, Suzanne. I've been waiting for you to get off the phone with the president. I mean, what is it with you and this guy? Doesn't he have better things to do with his time? Doesn't he still jog? <laughs> well, of course he does. But, you know, as an informal advisor of his, I like to check in from time to time, see how that diet of his is going. After all, I have lost 35 pounds of my own, and I know that it helps to have a little encouragement. How is your diet going now? It's going a little rough, actually. And I'm a little bit cranky, so let's just not talk about it, okay? In fact, if I don't get something big and greasy to eat by six o'clock, somebody around here is gonna get hurt. And I promise you, the skinny people will be first. Suzanne, I know you still consider yourself an independent, but I think it would behoove you to stick a little closer to our party, since we are calling all the shots now, and forget about your little fascination with the president. Oh. <laughs> Look, Nanny, I don't care what you think behooves me, but I happen to like the president, and I don't give a damn if he's a Democrat or a Republican. Oh, did y'all see that thing on the Today Show the other day where that Tim Russert and Katie Kirk were carrying on about how the president shouldn't be seen wearing a duck hunting outfit and holding dead ducks because it doesn't look presidential? <laughs> now, you know what he ought to say to those people? I'll tell you what he should have said. He should have said, look, Today is the day I have planned to go duck hunting. This is my duck hunting outfit. And I don't care if it makes for a bad photo or a good photo, or gives you the opportunity to call me a dead duck, a lame duck, or a lucky duck. <laughs> I'm going duck hunting today, and that's the end of that story. But I thought you said his appearance is the most important thing. Well, it is. But I think some of these people have just been living here too long. You know, in the rest of the country, there's nothing wrong with a man wearing a duck hunting outfit. Oh, another thing I think he should do, he should go to the pound, get himself a dog. He's really been wanting one, you know. Anyway, I think people like to see a real masculine man with his dog. And I don't think that cat of his has done him any good at all. Excuse me, but I fail to understand why we always have to have these insipid little conversations about what the president should be wearing and whether or not he should have a dog. Who cares? I mean, isn't anyone else just a little bit excited that with Newt Gingrich's leadership, we are finally on the verge of realizing our contract with America? Guess not. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure Hillary won't even let him have a dog. Oh, I'm sure she will. And if they're smart, they'll make it a female. Then there can be someone else in the White House Newt Gingrich can call a bitch. <laughs> oh, please. Why do you keep bringing that up? You know, he never confirmed that he said that. Well, he didn't have to. He had the pleasure of having it repeated across America. And he got to look good defending his mother. Well, what was he supposed to do? Call this poor, elderly, defenseless woman who gave birth to him a liar? A oh, poor, elderly, defenseless woman. Give me a break. That woman could have starred in Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> Is it true Hillary won't let the president have a dog? No, it's not true at all. She thought it was a wonderful idea. Now, you see that? You started a rumor. I mean, by tomorrow, that's going to be all over town. <laughs> and this from the queen of spreading rumors. Not to mention that when you first came here, you couldn't remember if Suzanne was a lesbian or if she had killed a man. <laughs> what the hell is this all about? I killed a man? Oh, I was drinking then. And I was working for the Post. I can tell you now that it disgusts me. You mean because you unfairly maligned people? No, because I was drinking during the wrong administration. I should have been drinking during the Reagan years. You know, I am so sick of all these digs at Republicans. I mean, the bottom line is, Emerson, while you were self-indulging, your guys blew it. Now you're sober and we're in charge. So live with it. You know, you just better be careful because I just might whisper something to you just between the two of them. All right, that's it. I want you both to stop it right now. 
I mean, we were supposed to be spending the weekend together over at my house, you know, so we can monitor all this violence on television, and I can't even stand to be in the same room with you at work. <laughs> I don't know if it's this diet or what, but I am just so sick and tired of everybody yakking all the time. <laughs> who cares who called who a bitch, or who should or should not be seen in a duck hunting outfit? <laughs> People in this town just jack all day long about absolutely nothing. Then they spend their time going to parties so they can talk about all the stuff they've been yakking about. I mean, can we just have a day, one day, where everybody just shuts the hell up? You mean kind of like a moratorium? Well, no, I didn't say anything about burning bodies, but you know, call it whatever you want. That's an idea. We could introduce it as a bill. Call it National Listening Day. No, I do not want to introduce it as a bill. Why does everything around here have to be discussed in a committee or end up as a bill? So you're saying... I'm saying I want everybody to shut the hell up. <laughs> Interesting concept. I can't eat this cake I saved from lunch. Does anybody want it? Now you're talking. <laughs> I tell you, this melba toast tastes like dust with crunch. All right, well, let's just get to work and we'll just get your mind off food, shall we? Oh, that's easy for you to say, miss. Could I possibly stuff another cheese puff in my mouth while I'm talking? <laughs> well, I can see this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm sorry, Nanny, but dieting is very hard, you know, especially when you reach a certain plateau. Of course, I don't expect you to understand any of this, because you've obviously been a little shrimp all your life. <laughs> Shrimp. All right, can we please get going? What are we doing? What do you mean, what are we doing? We're monitoring violence against women on television during a random 24-hour period. And hopefully, when we are finished, we will have a wealth of anecdotal material that will distinguish our report from those of others on the committee. I know that, Natty. I just wanted to know how you want to proceed. Well, Malone here is going to take notes on her laptop. Oh, incidentally, did you know that Newt is thinking of giving poor people a tax deduction for these? Oh, goody. I know if I were poor, that'd be the first thing that I'd want to buy. That I could keep track of all my welfare checks. Okay, so Malone's taking notes. So, what are we gonna watch first? Well, it looks like all the really tacky, kill me, stab me, eat me movies don't start till later. Is it a bad sign that even this kind of talk is making me hungry? Can you believe this? Here's this bimbo actress on Larry King Live talking about how she was on location and she went into the local grocery store and she couldn't find one thing suitable to eat in the entire store. Well, I got a suggestion, honey. How about going over to Bosnia and having a nice big old boiled log for dinner? Maybe that will put it in perspective for you, huh? Could we please just stop talking about food for one minute? Oh, like I said, it's going to be a long night. Excuse me, but... Before we begin, I, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate the opportunity to be, to be part of such a, an important investigative project. I mean, here I am, just this housewife, which is three weeks of lessons on my, my little computer, and yet you're giving me the opportunity to be part of something much bigger than myself, and, and also to show Jerry and his girlfriend that I'm not somebody to be dickered with. Watch the language. Well, I didn't mean that to sound dirty. That's all right, it's just us girls. You can say dickered as much as you want. How exciting, you mean talk dirty like men? Mm -hmm. Here, Malone, I don't have my glasses. You read what's on. Okay, uh, at nine o'clock there's Blood Omen. A vampire in a small upscale resort community sucks the blood out of all the 18 to 20 year old women working in a white slavery ring. Oh, based on a true story. It doesn't say. Now, also, there's night stockings. A Cuban woman in a tight blue dress is found washed ashore by a cheerleader in a very small bikini. Boy, and they say there are no good roles for women anymore. You know, I, I don't see why I have to be on this committee. I never get on a good committee. I just heard that Sonny Bono, he got agriculture, so now he gets to go to Hawaii and tour a sugarcane plant. Well, I wouldn't mind a tour a sugarcane plant. What am I to eat a sugarcane plant? <laughs> hey, here's something. Inspector Morris nabs the killer of seven co-eds found bound and gagged in the college campus. Wait a minute, I saw this. Yeah, it was ridiculous. These women were all in great shape. You know, they're all in their 20s, they're working out at the gym, they're running 10 miles a day. 
And yet this doddering 65-year-old man comes in and ties them all up and kills them. Give me a break. If just one of those girls wanted to, she could have kicked that guy's hoo-hahs from here to Buckingham Palace and back again. <laughs> Don't be vulgar, Emerson. That's the problem with television, all the vulgar language. It's okay. It's just us girls. <laughs> yeah. Digger, digger, digger. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Penis, penis, penis. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. Sources close to the president say he wanted the dog, but that the first lady forbid it. <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't that Jesse Helms going into a hospital? Well, sure looks like it. Turn it up. Accompanied by his wife, Helms was taken to Walter Reed Army Hospital after complaining of stomach pain. <laughs> so far, doctors have been unable to determine the cause, and he was later released. On the international front... Oh, like I'm the only one who ever spit in this guy's soup. Sure? <laughs> this is so scary knowing how I don't have cable. I, I, I can't watch this anymore. I'm alone. You're hurting my arm. Watch out, Darby! You're Wow. What I'd like to know is why is Darlene answering the door to a food delivery man in her bright fanny? Why, are you saying she's asking for it? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's not very smart. What's he delivering, anyways? How a submarine sandwich? <laughs> oh, that looks good. Well, this is just ridiculous. Here she's looked through the people, she sees what's out there, so she opens the door wearing a push up bra with little hearts all over it, and she thinks he's going to be happy with a 50 cent tip. <laughs> Excuse me, but I thought that's why we were monitoring these shows, so that we could expose the kind of sexist thinking that you're espousing right now that says scantily clad women deserve to be murdered, and that somehow it's sexy. I can't look at this. I'm not saying she deserves it. I'm just saying that as women, it behooves us to be prudent. And I'm saying that we have a right to walk down the street or answer the door any damn way we please and not get killed for it. Yes, Darlene is a stupid girl. Am I sorry she's gone? Not really. But she has a right to answer the door in that outfit. Oh, for crying out loud, who really cares, you know? Personally, I'd let her eat Darlene's sandwich. You know, Emerson, I really feel sorry for you. You're still peddling that dated old Gloria Stein and poor me crap. In case you haven't noticed, that is over. Feminism is boring. I am woman, hear me snore. Oh, really? Well, thanks for reminding me. I guess I can tell the four million women who were battered last year and the 33 million women who still earn less than a man that we're bored with them, too. Oh, please. You know, if I wanted to get my shorts on a bunch over women's lip, I could just call up my sister Julia and hold the phone out for four hours. <laughs> please, get back on track here, please. I'm sorry, but I, for one, think it was in really poor taste for them to continue that slumber party after Shannon was decapitated. Chef, mm. Arjun, bed. I'll get it. Okay, let's review. What do we have so far, Malone? Well, we've been watching for a little over three hours now. We've monitored at least some portion of seven movies. 36 women have been killed, all but one at the hands of men. The other was killed by a male dog. 23 were nude or semi-nude. No men were nude unless you count the Ken doll that was used to bludgeon the mail order bride from the Philippines. <laughs> It's a jungle out there, isn't it? Emerson? Yes? People here to see you. Who is it? FBI. <laughs> well, I'm just so sorry. As you can see, it was all just a great big misunderstanding. I hope I wasn't any trouble to you. Well, we'll still have to check it out. Oh, of course. Senator Helms is a national treasure. <laughs> and if you need any more saliva samples, please let me know. There's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> well, bye. Drive carefully. <sighs> I cannot believe you reported me to the FBI. I told you it was an anonymous tip line. I didn't give my name. No, but you gave mine. Well, that's what you get for making up some ridiculous story just to annoy me. Oh, this is just so like you to go and tell on someone. I bet it behooves you to have your desk right in front of the teachers all through school. You are just so humorless. Humorless? How was I supposed to know it was a joke? Let's face it, Emerson, you are not exactly the most stable person in the world. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? 
It means you tell me you put something in Jesse Helm's soup, I believe you. The next thing that man is in the hospital. It doesn't take a genius to spit. I said I spit in it. It was a joke. Ha ha. It didn't really happen, okay? But now for the rest of my natural life, I am on file with the FBI as a potential threat to the society and or nutcase all because of you and your ain't retentive personality. <laughs> That's another thing. I am so sick and tired of you insulting my personality and saying that we Republicans have no sense of humor. We have a sense of humor! <laughs> and like, I don't care about women just because I shave under my arms and don't carry Ms. Magazine around in my purse. Ladies, please, we're supposed to be monitoring violence against women, not participating in it. I know, let's go back to what we were doing before. Dicker, dicker, dicker. Come on, everybody. <laughs> said was, for somebody who got her job the old-fashioned way by serving under her congressman, you've been pretty damn callous to the rest of us. <laughs> oh, that's right. Let's make it personal, because you know that you and your party are too bankrupt to come up with any real ideas for improving things. Oh, except for saving the spotted owl. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Why don't you go on talk radio and talk about that? Keep stereotyping all the intelligent, compassionate people in this country so no one will notice when you kill off Barney or cut five million children off of women. Oh, hey, look at this! The president took Suzanne's advice and got a dog! Well, we haven't seen the dog in person yet, Jim, but we understand he's a golden retriever from the Arlington Animal Shelter. Jackie, is this an attempt by the president to appeal to middle-class white males? Well, it would certainly seem that way. And according to an unnamed administration source, it was the first lady who insisted that the president get a dog. Boy, this is everywhere. Susanna would really be surprised at what she's stirred up. Of course, it remains to be seen if this will have any effect on his standing in the polls. Some people feel that the president should have gotten a mixed breed, or at least a dog who would have been less likely to be adopted. At any rate, it just shows how truly desperate the president is. Where is Suzanne, anyway? Uh, she said she had to go out for a few minutes. She, she'll be right back. Sure. That's what Shannon said just before they decapitated her. <laughs> go out? Where the heck could she go? You know, Mr. President, sometimes a person just has to have a cheeseburger, and that's all there is to it. I couldn't agree more, especially when the cheese is melted just right. <laughs> and in other news, the president has added a dog to the first family in what several prominent Republicans are calling a pathetic and transparent attempt to distract from the real issues at hand. The border hey, get that song back. President. You like that? By the way, how's that bun? Lightly toasted. How about yours? Oh, the same. Remind me to take a fried pie for Hillary. What kind did you get? Cherry. That's my favorite. Oh, me too. Come on, sugar baker. Get down now. Get down, boy. You talk too much, you 